I saw a report on CNBC the other day and it said something along the lines of Americans are not ready to embrace EVs. We told you it wouldn't happen. Uh, EV adoption is stalling. It's, you know, it was just a fad. It's over with now. Well, maybe you should tell that to everyone in Europe and China. We have EV sales from the month of July for France, Germany, and the Netherlands, three of the biggest countries or car markets in Europe. And EV sales actually continue to skyrocket. It's absolutely not the story the media are trying to tell you. You have to ask yourself the question, I mean, why are they why are they creating these headlines? Why are they trying so hard to convince us all that EVs are not working, that people aren't buying them when in fact the inverse is actually true? Hello my friends. Welcome to the channel. Great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching the Electric Viking. Welcome to all new subscribers. Welcome back everyone else. EV sales in all three of these large European countries are up significantly versus last year. Now, purely electric car sales have increased at a far quicker pace than hybrids or plug-in hybrids in all of them. Let's start with France. 24% of all cars sold in the month of July in France were electric. Now, not all of those were fully electric. However, Electric cars are growing still very quickly in France. Of those 24%, 11% were plug-in hybrids and 13% and were fully electric. That means EVs have increased by 46% year over year, 46%. In fact, that's approximately the average growth rate in France this year. That's a pretty staggering number. That's the S-curve disruption point we're talking about right there. The 20 best-selling electric cars in France. Well, let's just look at the, the top 10 best-selling electric cars in France as provided by Clean Technica. First, the Dacia Spring. Now, this was just for the month of July. We'll have a look at the month of July and then look at the overall numbers for the year. Dacia Spring, cheapest EV you can buy in France that is actually a proper car, not a quadricycle. That sold 2,127 first place. Next was the Tesla Model Y. That was followed by the Fiat 500e, the Peugeot 208 EV, the Peugeot 308, the MG4. So there you go. MG are really the only Chinese brand doing well in Europe right now. And in fact, they're not just doing well, they're doing very, very well. Part of that reasoning is not only do they have a good car, the MG4 is a good car, has been a lot of complaints about quality, but it's, it is a good car though, I, I think overall. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. But part of the reason is people don't think it's a Chinese car company. They think it's British. So, yeah. Now, speaking of car companies, where they come from, the Dacia Spring. Is Dacia uh, a European car brand? No, but Europeans think it is. So, um, well, Dacia Spring, that's made in China 100% and it's selling really well. And if you told people before they bought it that it's made in China, you'd probably find if you look at the perception of Europeans towards Chinese cars, a lot less people would buy them. That's what's happening. It's one of the reasons why Chinese brands aren't doing as well in Europe as what we all thought they would. Europeans are a little bit hesitant if they believe the car is Chinese or it looks Chinese or it sounds Chinese they're less likely to buy it. Now, it's not always the case, but generally it is. Next was the Tesla Model 3. Now, the Tesla Model 3 did actually sell more than the Peugeot 308 because the numbers we have for the 308 are the EV version and the plug-in hybrid version. But interestingly, the Renault Megane EV was next. That's a brand new Renault EV. And then in ninth place was the Volkswagen Tiguan plug-in hybrid. But if we're just looking at EV sales only, in ninth was the Mini Cooper EV. That was followed by the Renault Twingo EV and the Kia Nero. So these sales numbers really give you a good idea of what's happening in France. And that is people are definitely buying more EVs than plug-in hybrids. Clearly EV growth is skyrocketing. Of the top 10 best-selling uh, either plug-in hybrids or EVs in France, eight of the top 10 were purely EV only. So what are the best-selling cars in France so far this year? Was it Tesla? Was it someone else? Well, one thing I want to remind people who don't know this, or if, if you don't know this, I'm not reminding you, am I letting you know this? 
The French are very patriotic about their cars, more so, I believe, than Americans are, more so than most countries are. French, very patriotic about their cars. That's where you see all their car brands. Dacia, they perceive as their own brand. Renault, same thing. Of course, Peugeot, same thing. That's why those cars are in this list. Historically, French cars sell well in France, and nothing wrong with that. I think that's perfectly normal. First for the year, for the first seven months, Tesla Model Y, 19,372 deliveries. Second, Dacia Spring. Third, the Fiat 500e. Fourth, the Peugeot 208 EV. Fifth, the Renault Megane EV. By the way, that's about to go on sale in Australia for 65,000 Australian dollars. It's um, about the same price as a Tesla Model Y, but obviously a much smaller car. Next was the Tesla Model 3, the MG4 followed that. Then we have the Renault Twingo EV and the Renault Zoe. Now, all these cars I think are worth considering except the Renault Zoe. The Renault Zoe got a one star safety rating. Uh, it's a bit of an embarrassment when it comes to safety technology. And the Renault Zoe is about to be retired. There will be a new model. So guys, if you're French, you're watching this channel, don't buy the Renault Zoe. I mean, if you want to buy a secondhand one, yeah, be my, you know, that's fine. But if you're gonna go buy a brand new car, why would you buy a brand new car with a one star safety rating when it's about to be replaced with a new model? Wait for the new model, it will be better. And it won't have a one star safety rating. That's France. France EV sales clearly are growing significantly. Now, who owns the French car market when it comes to plug-in hybrids and EVs? Put the two together. Tesla is in first with 12.2% market share. Peugeot just behind 12.2% market share as well. Renault is third with 8.3%. Dacia is next with 7%. And MG is next with 5.7%. Now, if you're new to, the, new to the channel, MG is owned by the Chinese government and Alibaba. Uh, it's part of the SAIC um, conglomerate group of car brands. Not to say that's a bad thing, just letting you know. Germany, how did Germany go? Well, Volkswagen has most certainly had a resurgence in Germany lately. One of the key reasons for this, and strangely, I haven't seen this mentioned anywhere on any websites in America, whether that be all the ones that you know about, I'm sure you know about lots of different electric car websites. I haven't seen any of them mention this. Now, the big reason for Volkswagen's resurgence is price. They have reduced the price of their cars in Europe. They've reduced, they've slashed the price of their cars in China, and that's helped them their sales blow up compared to what they were, which was bad in China. In Europe, they've discounted their prices of their EVs as well. The German auto market has had a pretty good month in July, 19% increase over last year's July. However, EV sales were up 70% year over year. That, my friends, is amazing. In fact, one out of every five cars sold in July was fully electric. So EVs up 70%. However, plug-in hybrids down 37%. So this is what we all knew would happen once subsidies were removed for plug-in hybrids. Uh, the government did some studies, European Union did some studies to show that people weren't driving them as, as EVs which is why I still contend, I still can't understand why people are arguing about this fact to try and say that a plug-in hybrid is an EV because unfortunately, if most people don't drive it as an EV, it doesn't really qualify. That's what I think. But let me know if you agree or you disagree. Anyhow, the good news, 70% growth. Imagine if we see the same thing next year. That would be amazing. We'd be getting close to 50%. We'd be seeing what we're seeing in places like Sweden, where they're going towards Norway's direction. The 10 best EVs in terms of sales in July of 2023, first was the ID4. Second, the 500e, Fiat 500e. Third was the Tesla Model Y, followed by the Mercedes EQA. Now, personally, I don't understand why you'd buy an EQA over an ID4. And I've asked people this question, please, let me know what's your reasoning. I think the ID4 is actually a better car. It's, a, it's not amazing, but it's a ground up built EV. EQA is not, uh, and it's more expensive and it has less range. I mean, I just don't understand why people would buy it. Anyhow, next was the Skoda Enyaq, followed by the Dacia Spring, the Volkswagen ID3, the Tesla Model 3, the Cooper Born, and the Audi Q4 e-tron. Now, in the 11th place was the Hyundai Kona EV. The top 11 best-selling cars in the hybrid, plug-in hybrid, and EV segment were all fully electric. 
you can see that plug-in hybrids are just dying a very fast death as we predicted here on this channel and as many of you thought would happen uh, and it's yeah it's come true so what are the best selling evs in germany so far this year well the model y is still completely dominating the car market it sold about twice as many as the next closest competitor model y nearly 30,000 sales, 29,900, followed by the Volkswagen ID4 with 16,000. The Volkswagen ID3 is in third, followed by the Fiat 500e, the Audi Q4 e-tron, Skoda Enyaq, Tesla Model 3, Mercedes EQA, Cooper Born, and then the Smart for 2 EV. MG4 is on the list. It is actually in 13th place with 6,281 sales. So MG4, you can see it's actually not just doing well in countries like the UK, where people in the UK think of MG as their own brand, even though it's not. Uh, it's also doing well in France and even in Germany too. The Netherlands, fully electric car sales in the Netherlands are up 43% year over year. So that's the worst performing market out of these three. Netherlands, Germany, and France, 43% growth is the worst. What does that tell you about the fact that no one is mentioning this information, it's really interesting. EV sales, my friends, are absolutely blowing up and it's actually a really positive story. But unfortunately, like I said, the media is not too interested in these kinds of positive stories. Anyhow, one in every four cars sold in the month of July was fully electric in the Netherlands. Next year, probably be 50%, probably around about 50% in Germany and France as well. You can imagine what's gonna happen in 2025, 2026. Yeah, you get my point. In the month of July was the Skoda Enyaq, followed by the Tesla Model Y. Next was the Peugeot 208 EV. That was followed by the Kia Nero. Then we have the ID4, the Volkswagen ID4, then the Peugeot 2008 EV the Hyundai Ioniq 5, the Kia EV6, the BMW i4, and then the Volvo XC40. For Tesla fans, the Tesla Model 3 was down in 15th place with 224 deliveries. Well, all these positions are actually quite close to each other. If Tesla had sold what, like 30 more of them, they would be in uh, about eighth place. Um, so yeah, not far. Essentially, clearly people in Europe are waiting for the new version of the Model 3, and I think Tesla is as well. So that's part of the reason why Model 3 sales have declined over the past few months in most places in Europe. What are the best-selling cars though? Best-selling EVs so far this year in the Netherlands? Well, no surprise here at all on first place. It is the Tesla Model Y by a very big margin. Tesla delivered 7,300 Model Ys this year followed by the Peugeot 208 EV with 3,800. So nearly twice as many Model Ys as the second best-selling EV. Volvo XC40 was in third place with around 3,688 deliveries. That was followed by the Skoda Enyaq, the Volkswagen ID4, the Renault Megane EV, the Tesla Model 3, the Kia Nero, and then the Volkswagen ID3. Somewhat surprisingly, there's no MG4s in the top 20 best-selling EVs this year in the Netherlands. Not sure what's happened there. Either way, you can see this tremendous growth of EV sales in Europe this year. Absolutely, it is something we need to talk about more that needs to be appreciated because this does change the situation. It changes the situation because the more EV sales we get in more countries around the world, the more that influences the big parent companies, the big automaker parent companies to change what they're doing. That will affect what cars you guys are going to get in Australia. That will affect what you get in New Zealand. That will affect what you get in Thailand. That will affect what you get in the UK. That will affect what you get in America. Because remember, the global parent companies, they are not just, uh, they're not just selling cars in one country. They need to consider their global strategy. And if they see these numbers, which they will be, they have to realize that they need to change. So what are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.